Hello and good evening. Uh, first of all, let me to thank uh, Peace Coalition in Princeton for our, for uh, the event and also inviting me. Uh, actually, I'm not a guest. I'm a member of Peace Coalition here at Princeton. <laughs> Uh, I have been asked to brief you uh, on the latest situation of Iranian nuclear crisis. Uh, I would go very quickly because we don't have time on different periods of the Iranian nuclear program because you need to know a little bit about the history in order to have a correct assessment of today's dilemma. Uh, in 1950s, the United States uh, actually decided to uh, uh, nuclearize Iran, and Europeans completely supported the U.S. plan uh, from 1950s to 19, uh, 1979. This is the first period of history of Iranian nuclear uh, program. Uh, the U.S. Uh, had planned to uh, build 23 nuclear power plants in Iran. The first Iranian nuclear uh, uh, facility, Tehran Research Reactor, was built by Americans in 1967. And they gave carte blanche to the Shah for having uh, reprocessing and enrichment uh, uh, facilities in Iran, although there was a, a little bit at the end during Car President Carter, there was a little bit dispute on reprocessing, but at the end uh, there was a setback by the U.S. Uh, ad uh, admitting Iran could have reprocessing also. Uh, in 1979, we had revolution uh, very quickly about the second period. Uh, a revolution came, the Shah left the country, and revolutionaries decided to uh, stop all nuclear programs. And they decided not to have enrichment, they decided not to have reprocessing, they decided not to have 23 nuclear power plants, because from their perspective, these contracts and projects, they were uh, uh, they were imperialistic or Zionist projects. Uh, but uh, there was a contract between Iran and Germany signed in 1975. Iran paid about 8 billion Deutsche Mark and, uh, to, to build a, a nuclear power plant in south of Iran in Boucher. 90% was done, 8 billion Deutsche Mark was paid, and then we had revolution. There was uh, no other option other than completion of this uh, unfinished project because the, the money had been fully paid. And also there was a contract with France uh, for a consortium uh, to uh, 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 produce uh, enriched uranium, the fuel for this power plant. Iran actually paid $1.2 billion to France to have a share in this company uh, consortium. Right after the revolution, first of all, uh, uh, the U.S. decided to change its policy immediately and totally uh, different. And they said uh, they, 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 they would not have any type of cooperation with Iran on the nuclear. Uh, they stopped providing fuel for Tehran research reactor. This is a, rea a research reactor producing isotopes for uh, medical purposes. And Europeans also, they stopped every cooperation. Uh, there was only one nuclear power plant, and Iran had no plan, no uh, policy to have any type of producing fuel inside Iran. They just wanted, because they paid for the money, they just wanted to finish this uh, only nuclear power plant, but Germany declined due to US pressure. France declined to provide fuel for, for uh, Boucher. This is a history from 1980 to almost 1990. 
For a decade, Iran uh, tried to convince uh, European to, to do their commitments under the, the, the contracts they had with Iran, but they declined. Then they left no option for Iran to go to produce fuel domestically. There was no other option because the U.S. said Iran cannot have even a civilian nuclear power plant and Iran cannot have access to international market to, uh, to provide, uh, to buy fuel mo uh, for, for fuel for uh, uh, power plant. Uh, from 1990s, Iran uh, decided to be self-sufficient, uh, uh, producing fuel for uh, the only civilian nuclear power plant. It was in 2002. The international community uh, understood Iran has reached to, uh, has mastered uh, enrichment technology and now Iran can produce uh, its fuel domestically. This was a big shock. We entered practically to the third period of a uh, nuclear program from 2003 up to today. Uh, a decade of uh, political struggle between Iran and the West practically has been focused on the rights of Iran for producing fuel inside its country, enrichment. Under non-proliferation treaty, NPT, every member is authorized to produce fuel domestically or to buy from international market. There is no legal restriction. In 2003 to 2005, when I was member of a nuclear negotiation team, uh, we uh, had nuclear negotiation with EU3, Germany, uh, uh, France, and Britain. We offered them every transparency measures the international community requires to make sure the Iranian nuclear program would remain ever peaceful. And we had really no limits for transparency measures. Then they told us, even on the NPT, even if you give the maximum level of transparency, you can enrich uh, to 90% to 100%, and whenever you des decide, you can make nuclear bomb. Then we offered them uh, a set of measures which would uh, ensure the international community on no breakout in Iranian nuclear program. For example, we told them, we are ready voluntarily to accept to enrich below 5%. Although every member has right to enrich up to 100%. But this was our offer. To make it short, we gave them different sets of measures uh, on, as objective guarantees for non-diversion of Iranian nuclear program. But we failed because the US position was zero enrichment in Iran. This is completely against uh, NPT. Many other members of NPT, they are enriching even up to 100%. Then we had uh, a period practically of uh, uh, confrontation during President Ahmadinejad 2005 to 2013. And uh, the U.S. Uh, led the international community orchestrating the most draconian sanctions against Iran, unilateral sanctions, multilateral sanctions. They referred the Iranian nuclear file from the IAEA, uh, International Atomic Energy, uh, to the United Nations. They put in under Chapter 7, which means Iranian nuclear program is threat to international peace and security, and then they uh, could impose different sanctions. U.S. unilateral sanctions, European unilateral sanctions against Iranian banks, against oil, they did everything they could. Actually, today, Iran is the most sanctioned country in the world. However, their, their, their objective was to uh, uh, control Iranian nuclear program. They believed if they uh, imposed sanctions, then Iran would give up its nuclear program. Uh, 
Uh, today, there is a big change. First of all, we had election. A moderate president has been elected, which uh, from uh, the Western point of view, this is very important because during Ahmadinejad, we had negative uh, rhetoric from the ex-president on Holocaust, Israel, and the uh, political atmosphere was really bad, and there was uh, no way to, uh, to make a, a big deal on the nuclear. Therefore, this is one change. The second change uh, is on U.S. position. And I think this is the major change and positive change. Now the U.S. position is not zero enrichment, is not no enrichment, is about no nuclear bomb. This is big difference, big difference. Because now they are not going to deny the rights of Iran on their NPT like other members for, for uh, enrichment, but they are going, they are ready to respect the rights of Iran under certain conditions. What are the conditions? First, a set of measures on transparency. Uh, there are two protocols or two arrangements called additional protocol or and subsidiary arrangement code 3.1. If a member of NPT is uh, implementing these two uh, protocols, this is the maximum level of transparency internationally exists. There is nothing beyond. And about 120 countries they have signed to additional protocol, 80 countries they have declined to sign. Iran has accepted these two, which would guarantee the maximum level of transparency. But the US and Europeans, they are asking more. There is a, a set of issues they call possible military dimension issues, PMDs, which requires Iran to give access beyond additional protocol, while there is no protocol, no international rule, no regulations beyond NPT and additional protocol. However, Iran has accepted as confidence building to cooperate with the IAEA to address all these possible military dimension issues. Therefore, there is Principally, there is a clear agreement between world powers and Iran on a transparency measures. Then we are coming to enrichment and no breakout capability. They are asking a, a number of caps uh, at Iranian uh, nuclear program. One cap at the level of enrichment. They are asking Iran to limit it's the, the level of enrichment below 5% and stop 20%. The second cap is about uh, uh, stockpile of enriched uranium. They are asking Iran to limit its stockpile. The third cap is about the number of centrifuges. The fourth is about the type of centrifuges because Iran has different type of centrifuges. And the fifth is about uh, heavy water uh, facilities in Iraq, which the world powers are asking Iran to accept no reprocessing. Actually, about five big caps on Iranian nuclear program. Although all these caps are beyond NPT. I mean, a uh, member of NPT, there is no limitation for number of centrifuges, type of centrifuges, uh, the, the, the amount of a stockpile, level of centrifuges, heavy water, reprocessing. But Iran, in the latest talks, as we accepted in 2003 to 2005, the uh, new negotiation team also, they have accepted all these caps. Therefore, with these caps, uh, there is a clear guarantee that Iranian nuclear program and Iran forever would stay a non-nuclear weapon state. Uh, big changes uh, also came because of correct understanding of the US and Europeans that the sanctions have, uh, have not worked. Because now they see before sanctions, Iran has 3,000 centrifuges. Now Iran has 19,000 after sanctions. Before sanctions, Iran was reaching uh, below uh, 5%. After sanctions, Iran increased to 20%. 
before sanctions, the stockpile about, was about uh, a few 100 kilograms. Now is over 8,000 kilograms of stockpile of enriched uranium. Before sanctions, Iran had only one type of centrifuges. Now they have three, four types of centrifuges. Therefore, they understood the sanctions have been completely counterproductive, as uh, uh, Hillary said. The, the, that, that's why they want a deal. Uh, in, in latest talk just yesterday and the day before yesterday, uh, the foreign ministers of big powers, uh, they went to Geneva unexpectedly, and there was uh, 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 direct talks between Iranian foreign minister with all uh, six powers, a separate individual meeting with a state secretary of John Kerry, two rounds of meeting for seven hours. And with cooperation between Tehran and Washington, they finalized the draft of a uh, final agreement for peaceful settlement, settlement of Iranian nuclear program. Uh, surprisingly, the last day, France came and blocked the deal. And the French foreign minister said, we have to consider the concerns of Israelis, we have to consider the concerns of Saudi Arabia. And he uh, put on table a new condition that Iran should not have heavy water at all. This was something out of uh, negotiation, and there was nothing about this, because Iran accepted not to have reprocessing, no plutonium separation. But heavy water has huge implication in peaceful nuclear technology, on agriculture, medical, uh, different industries. That's why, uh, uh, despite the fact the draft was ready, just to sign, and the US was supportive. European, other Europeans, they were supportive. It was blocked by, by the French foreign minister. They have decided to have the next round of talks within 10 days. If French uh, changes its position, I believe uh, the nuclear dispute after a decade would be resolved with the, the current draft which we really uh, should appreciate uh, the, the work John Kerry and his team, they did constructively with his Iranian counterpart, and uh, it's prepared to be signed. Uh, since uh, Revolution 1979, uh, the Iranian uh, government has branded the U.S. as a great Satan. Uh, also, we have uh, been hearing death to America. This is correct. But uh, if you review the U.S. administration, every U.S. administration also they have branded the same, the Iranians. Access of evil or state of terrorism or prior state. You would find every U.S. administration they have had the same uh, type of branding against Iranians. Uh, this is a fact. This is not only about Iran. This is the same about the US. We should pray for a time which uh, the, this type of brandings would end and uh, uh, we would have uh, a better relation uh, without uh, 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 slogans of death to uh, America or Iran. Uh, however, uh, the, the fact about Iranian nation is perhaps uh, interesting because even the, 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 the latest poll publicly uh, uh, was published in Iranian media shows 80% of Iranians, they are pro-relation with the US. And perhaps Iran is the only country in the Middle East, which the nation, the people, they like the relation with the US. The other countries, uh, you have polls, you can go and read the polls, although the US has uh, perhaps good relation with the states, but the image of the US in the, 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 the uh, streets of Arab streets is very, very negative and they hate the US. Therefore, this is uh, a major difference which we should concentrate on the nations. And Iranian nation is, is really pro uh, good relation with the US. That's why uh, some months ago, uh, uh, Ambassador William Miller 
uh, and I, we wrote a joint op-ed published in Christian Science Monitor inviting our leaders to open up the relation for uh, civilians if they cannot resolve the hostilities between two states, at least lead, uh, let the civilians, the people-to-people -people relation. And uh, then this would be the best way to build up the relations. On terrorism, uh, the, the, the worst uh, uh, event the U.S. has been confronted in his history was September 11. And there was no single Iranian involved in September 11. And all those criminals, they were, they were member uh, or citizens of those countries, ally of the U.S. in the region. Either they were Saudis or Pakistanis, they were not Iranians. And uh, uh, war on terror was about fighting Al-Qaeda, Sunni extremists. And Iran cooperated fully, as Hillary explained in, in detail. Uh, Iran cooperated fully with the US on war on terror. Whether uh, US can have a good relation with a country uh, accused of terrorism or not, the US administration has no doubt today that the most dangerous place for terrorism today is Pakistan, where uh, Bin Laden was not in Iran, Bin Laden was in Pakistan. And the, the Sunni the extremists, Al Qaeda, they are more in Pakistan. They understand very well this is the most dangerous place for spread of terrorism. Not Pakistani nation. They are they, they are peaceful nation. Not Pakistani government. But whether we like it or not, these extremists they are there, and they are the main backbone of Taliban and Al Qaeda in Afghanistan, in Syria, everywhere. And at the same time, the U.S. has excellent relation with Pakistan. And I think uh, Pakistan has been able to get the most uh, U.S. financial aids, I know, $40, $50 billion during the last decade, although there is a big difference on terrorism and although they found Bin Laden in Pakistan. However, the difference between Iran and, and, uh, and the U.S. on terrorism is not about the global issue of terrorism. They have a lot of common interests fighting terrorism like Al-Qaeda, like extremism, like jihadist, uh, extreme jihadists today in Syria, everywhere in the Middle East. The problem is about Israel. And that's why the U.S. is blaming Iran. And the problem about Israel has been Israeli invasion of Lebanon. Uh, Hezbollah only was created to defend the integrity of Lebanon. Everyone who is familiar with the case knows in 19, early 1980s, Israel invaded Lebanon for years and years. They occupied Lebanon. And uh, ultimately, Hezbollah was created to defend uh, their own country. And there is dispute between uh, Iran and also and the U.S., Iran and the West, over um, the Hamas and Palestinian groups. But even today for Europeans and Americans, this is completely clear. 90% of the finance and help for Hamas is coming from uh, Arab countries, from the U.S. allies. It is not from Iran. Therefore, uh, dispute over Palestine, it is not only about Iran, it is with Islamic world, and I hope... Uh, President Obama would be able to convince uh, Netanyahu to, to uh, cooperate on the peace process and therefore we would be able to find a just and justified solution for a Palestinian issue to end this, this uh, crisis. Thank you.